The Pacific Ocean is the world's largest body of water at 165 million square kilometers in size and covers about one third of the Earth's surface. All of the continental land masses on the planet could be placed in the Pacific Ocean and if one tried there would still be room to fit another continent the size of Africa. The volume of the Pacific Ocean is approximately 622 million cubic kilometers with water temperatures varying from freezing in the polar areas to about 30 degrees Celsius near the equator. Salinity also varies by latitude with the water near the equator less salty than that found in the mid-latitudes due to abundant equatorial precipitation throughout the year. Towards the poles, from the temperate latitudes, salinity is also low, for little evaporation of seawater takes place in these frigid areas. The motion of Pacific waters is generally clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Slicing the floor of the Pacific are canyon-like trenches or deeps that have an average depth of over 4,300 meters, but the rest is largely an underwater plain. The greatest known depth is the Challenger Deep at over 11,000 meters in the Marianas Trench. Rising from the plains are swellings, many of which are volcanic seamounts. The extensive Albatross Plateau covers most of the southeast and east central Pacific basins. Pinnipeds, often generalized as seals, are fin-footed mammals and comprise of the walrus, the eared seals, the sea lions, the fur seals and the earless seals. Pinnipeds are typically sleek-bodied and barrel-shaped. Their bodies are well adapted to the aquatic habitat where they spend most of their lives. Their limbs consist of short, wide, flat flippers. The smallest pinniped weighs about 70 kilograms on average when full grown and is 1.3 meters long. The largest, the male southern elephant seal, is over 4 meters long and weighs up to 2,300 kilograms or 4,800 pounds. The earless seals, or true seals, are the most diverse and widespread of pinnipeds. They lack external ears, have more streamlined snouts, and are generally more aquatically developed and adapted. They swim with efficient, undulating whole body movements using their more developed rear flippers. Their swimming efficiency and an array of other physiological adaptations make them better built for deep and long diving and long distance migration. These mammals are, however, very clumsy on land moving by wriggling their front flippers and abdominal muscles. The two back flippers form a tail-like structure which does not aid walking on land. True seals generally communicate by slapping the water and grunting rather than vocalizing. Pinniped's flippers, their limbs, are proportionately shorter than those of most other mammals. The digits of each limb are bound together by a web of skin with fingers and toes, and earless seals have claws on their front flippers, while eared seals, more commonly known as sea lions, have claws on their back flippers. Fur seals have blubber as well as specially adapted fur coats, including outer guard hairs that repel water and a layer of insulating under fur. For this reason, they were particularly prized by sealers. Many species were nearly hunted to extinction. Most species of seals come out of the water to mate and then return to the water once this season has passed. The fertilized egg develops in the cow for nine months and during this time, the cow eats and builds up fat in her body. Towards the end of the pregnancy, she returns to the breeding grounds to give birth on land. The reserves of fat will allow her to feed her pup and go for long periods without eating. After the pup is born, it only knows its mother by smell and call. Before the pup is taught how to survive, the mother returns to the sea, abandoning it, and will likely never see the pup again. Alone, the pup continues life on shore, stores up fat, grows bigger 
and learns to fend for itself before beginning life at sea. Pups are born with a natal coat that is adapted for the pre-weaning period, either a thick pelage to keep them warm in Arctic environments, or a thin layer of fur to keep them cool in summer. About 11 days after birth, this coat is replaced with an adult coat, better suited to life at sea. Until this age, pups risk hypothermia and drowning if they spend too much time in the ocean. Their eyes are well adapted for seeing, both above and below the water surface, and the clear membrane protects its eyes underwater. Seals are carnivores and can dive down to over 400 meters. They prey on a variety of fish, including krill, herring, flounder and salmon. Most seals weigh between 70 and 120 kilograms, the size of an adult human. The Caribbean monk seal has been hunted to extinction. The Hawaiian monk seal is endangered. And the Mediterranean monk seal is considered critically endangered because of human disturbances at its breeding grounds. Not all these disturbances are on purpose. Often, monk seal cows beach themselves to give birth. Tourists, who don't realize what's happening, think the cow has become stranded on the beach, and they may chase the cow back into the water, thinking they're saving her life. However, this may actually kill both the cow and her pup. Dolphins, often regarded as one of the Earth's most intelligent animals, are marine mammals and are closely related to whales and porpoises. There are almost 40 species of dolphin, varying in size from 1.2 meters and 40 kilograms, to the orcas or killer whales, which are 9.5 meters and 10 tons in weight. The dolphin entered the water roughly 50 million years ago and is named from the Greek delphis for womb, interpreted as meaning a fish with a womb. Most dolphins have acute eyesight, have no sense of smell, but a keen sense of taste. They can hear frequencies ten times above the upper limit of human hearing through their teeth that act as antennae, and have a well-developed sense of touch, with free nerve endings densely packed in the skin, especially around the snout, pectoral fins and genital area. Dolphins give birth at sea to usually only one calf, twins are very rare. At birth, the calf is quickly taken to the surface so that it can make its first breath. The calf will nurse up to two years and will stay with its mother until it's between three and eight years old. Dolphins are known to have sex for reasons other than reproduction, sometimes also engaging in homosexual behavior. Occasionally, dolphins behave sexually towards other animals including humans. Dolphins make a broad range of sounds using nasal air sacs located just below the blowhole. Whistles, bursts of thudding sounds and clicks. Dolphins occasionally leap above the water surface and sometimes perform elaborate acrobatics, possibly to locate schools of fish, communicate with other dolphins, dislodge parasites or simply for amusement. Play is an important part of dolphin culture. Dolphins play with seaweed and play fight with other dolphins, enjoying the riding of the bow waves of boats, and they will surf coastal swells and ride with them. Generally, dolphins sleep with only one brain hemisphere at a time in slow wave sleep, thus maintaining enough consciousness to breathe and to watch for possible predators and other threats at the same time. Except for humans, dolphins have few natural enemies. Dolphin meat is high in mercury, thus pose a health danger to humans when consumed. Thank goodness for that. Otherwise, there would be factory ships processing dolphin meat. The humpback whale is a species of baleen whale. Adults range in length from 12 to 16 meters and weigh approximately 36,000 kilograms. The humpback has a distinctive body shape with unusually long pectoral fins and a knobbly head. Although the humpback is enormous, it is very acrobatic 
known for breaching and slapping the water with its tail and pectorals. Humpback whales feed only in summer in polar waters and migrate to tropical or subtropical waters to breed and give birth in the winter. During the winter, humpbacks fast, living off their fat reserves. Their diet consists mostly of krill and small fish. Humpbacks have a diverse repertoire of feeding methods, including the bubble net feeding technique, in which groups of whales release large amounts of bubbles at a depth of about 600 feet, which confuses and stuns their prey of schools of small fish. Like other large whales, the humpback was, and is, a target for the whaling industry. Once hunted to the brink of extinction, its population fell by an estimated 90% before a moratorium was introduced in 1966. Stocks have since partially recovered. Yet entanglement in fishing gear, collisions with ships and noise pollution continue to affect the 80,000 humpbacks worldwide. The humpback's long black and white tail fin has unique patterns which make individual whales identifiable. The tail can be up to a third of body length and offers high maneuverability, along with aiding in temperature control when migrating between warm and cold climates. Humpbacks have from 270 to 400 darkly colored baleen plates on each side of their mouths. These plates, made of keratin, the same material that makes up human hair and fingernails, act as a fine mesh to filter out from the large amounts of ingested seawater all the minute plankton and small fish that are sucked in. Humpback whales' lifespans range from 45 to 100 years. Fully grown, the males average 13 or 14 meters, and females are slightly larger at 15 to 16 meters with large specimens weighing over 40 metric tons. Annual migration of up to 15,000 kilometers is typical, making it one of the longest traveled mammal species. Once in warmer water and during the winter months, courtship takes place and competition is usually very fierce. Males gather into competitive groups and fight for the female's attention. Behaviours include breaching, tail slapping, fin slapping, charging each other and parrying. Whale songs have an important role in mate selection too, used between males to establish dominance. Females typically breed every two or three years. Newborn calves are roughly the length of their mother's head at 20 feet and 2 tons. They nurse for approximately six months then mix nursing and independent feeding for about six months more. Humpback milk is 50% fat and pink in colour. Males produce a complex song lasting 10 to 20 minutes, which they repeat for hours at a time. Its purpose has been related to communications. Both male and female humpback whales vocalise, but only males produce the long, loud, complex songs for which the species is famous. Cetaceans have no vocal cords, so whales generate their songs by forcing air through their massive nasal cavities, like trumpets. Humpback whales have also been found to make a range of other social sounds to communicate, such as grunts, groans, thwops, snorts and barks. The North Atlantic humpback sing the same song, while those of the North Pacific sing a different song. Each population's song changes slowly over a period of years without repetition. The worldwide population has now grown to 80,000 humpback whales, still down from a pre-whaling population of 125,000. One famous humpback is Migaloo, an albino humpback whale that travels up and down the east coast of Australia. He became famous in the local media on account of his extremely rare, all-white appearance, much like the fictional Moby Dick. Migaloo, first sighted in 1991 and believed to be three to five years old at that time, was the only known all-white humpback whale. Migaloo is an Aboriginal Australian word meaning white fella. 
the Queensland and New South Wales government introduced a 500 metre exclusion zone around the whale due to the intense interest and feared that he was becoming distressed by the number of boats following him. Recent close-up pictures have shown Migaloo to have skin cancer and skin cysts as a result of his lack of protection from the sun. In 2006, a white calf was spotted with a normal humpback mother in Byron Bay, New South Wales, Australia. Another rare phenomenon of nature. Seabirds and humans have a long history together. They have provided food to hunters, guided fishermen to fishing stocks, and led sailors to land. Seabirds, or marine birds, are birds that have adapted to life within the marine environment. Seabirds live longer, breed later, and have fewer young than other birds do. But they invest a great deal of time in their young. Seabirds can be highly pelagic, spending much of their lives at sea. They can be just coastal, or in some cases spend a part of the year away from the sea entirely. Little is known about seabirds due to life far out to sea and breeding in isolated colonies. Found near large bodies of open water with an abundant food supply and old growth trees for nesting is the bald eagle, a North American bird of prey. Bald eagles are not actually bald and the name really means white-headed. They prefer habitats near large bodies of open water with an abundance of fish. They are powerful flyers and soar on thermal convection currents. In full flight, they can reach speeds of up to 70 kilometers per hour. Eagles, when old enough to breed, return to where they were born. The nest is used repeatedly with new material added each year. And they are the largest of any in North America, at an average of 4 meters deep, 2.5 meters across, and weighing 1 metric ton in weight. Their call consists of harsh, chirping whistles. The average lifespan of bald eagles in the wild is around 20 years, and in captivity, over 50 years. The pelican is a large water bird that is characterized by a long beak and large throat pouch used in catching prey and draining water from the scooped up contents before swallowing. The brown pelican usually plunge dives for its prey, while other species fish from the surface. Pelicans live from 15 to 25 years in the wild and 50 years in captivity, with a lineage that has existed for at least 30 million years. It is not true that they get cataracts from plunge diving. This is an urban myth. Whether poised at a river bend or cruising the coastline with slow, deep wing beats, the great blue heron is a majestic sight. This stately heron, with its subtle blue-gray plumage, often stands motionless as it scans for prey, or wades belly deep with long, deliberate steps. They may move slowly, but can strike like lightning to grab dinner. In flight, the heron tucks its neck, while the long legs trail out behind it. Great blue herons build a bulky stick nest and the female lays three to six pale blue eggs. One brood is raised each year. If the nest is abandoned or destroyed, the female may lay a replacement clutch. Eggs are incubated for around 28 days and hatch asynchronously over a period of several days. The first chick to hatch usually becomes more experienced in food handling and has aggressive interactions with siblings, often growing more quickly than the other chicks. Penguin is an aquatic, flightless bird, living almost exclusively in the Southern Hemisphere, especially in Antarctica. The penguin is thought to have evolved from a flightless loon-type bird, and they have highly adapted for life in the water because their wings have evolved into flippers, making them accomplished swimmers. Penguins have no fear of humans and will approach explorers without hesitation, possibly due to the fact that they have no known land predators. The Stellar Sea Lion, also known as the Northern Sea Lion, is named for the naturalist Georg Wilhelm Stella, 
who first described them in 1741. They are characterized by external ear flaps, have short, thick hair, and long foreflippers. They have the ability to walk on all fours, are the largest of all the sea lions, and have an appetite to match. These giant pinnipeds are fish, squid, octopus, and at times even smaller seals. They are found off northern Pacific coasts, from Japan to California. They have an average lifespan of 20 to 30 years. The largest sea lion is the Stellar sea lion, which can weigh 1,000 kilograms and grow to a length of 3 meters. Sea lions consume large quantities of food at a time and are known to eat about 5 to 8 percent of their body weight at a single feeding. Stellar sea lion pups are born almost black, weighing around 23 kilograms, and remain dark for several months. Adult animals are lighter in colour than most sea lions, ranging from pale yellow to tawny and occasionally reddish. Males are further distinguished from females by broader, higher foreheads, flatter snouts and darker, slightly tuftier hair around their large necks, giving them a maned appearance. Indeed, their Latin name translates roughly as maned one with a broad forehead. These animals are social and gather at various times throughout the year, even when mating and breeding are not taking place. The big bulls are unmistakable, for they are three times larger than the females. Sea lions are readily trainable and are often a popular attraction at zoos and aquariums. The archetypal circus seal, performing tricks such as the iconic ball bounce, and throwing and catching balls on its nose and clapping, is usually a California sea lion and not a seal at all. Sea lion attacks on humans are rare and have been known to assist or save humans who show signs of distress in the open waters. In June 2000, Kevin Hines leapt into San Francisco Bay. He reportedly was saved by a sea lion that kept him afloat and breathing until the paramedics arrived. When these giants thunder ashore, their favoured beaches, called rookeries, disappear under their huge numbers. Young pups are sometimes crushed to death by the throng, unheeded by powerful males with only a single purpose in mind. Bulls must establish and hold a beach territory in order to breed, and most do not achieve this until they are nine or ten years of age. Females begin to reproduce at about five years of age, and typically have one pup per year. Sea lion mothers care for their young and recognize them by a keen sense of smell. Females slip into the sea to hunt and return to their young with a day's catch, identifying their own offspring by touch and scent only. Most stellar sea lion populations declined markedly in the 1980s and 1990s, even though the animals are protected. Historically, the sea lion has had only one very slight commercial value, but in the 19th century, their whiskers were sold for a penny apiece for use as tobacco pipe cleaners. Some Chinese consider their penises to be aphrodisiacs in traditional medicines, which causes these animals to be hunted so that aging human males can be given exotic placebos. Killing sea lions is strictly prohibited in the United States, Canada and Russia, but in Japan a fixed number are still removed annually ostensibly to protect their fisheries. The name salmon is derived from the Greek word meaning hooked snout with reference to the hooked jaws of males in the kype or mating season. Species include Chinook, Pink, Coho, Masu, Chum and Sokai. For thousands of years the history, economy and culture of Canada's west coast have been inextricably linked to Pacific salmon. Salmon are typically anodromous or migratory, for they are born in fresh water, migrate to the ocean, and return to the exact same location of fresh water to spawn. Salmon lay their eggs in the gravel beds of freshwater streams. The female scoops out a nest, or red, with her tail, by turning on her side and fanning vigorously. The eggs are immediately fertilized with sperm by a male waiting nearby. The female then covers the eggs with gravel, and both adults die shortly afterwards. 
Several species do not migrate and are restricted to fresh water all through their lives. Salmon have a homing behavior and are shown to depend on olfactory memory, which enables them to travel vast distances to the exact spot where they were born, to spawn, possibly by their stronger sense of smell or perhaps sensitivity to the Earth's magnetic field. The exact mechanism that makes it possible for these extraordinary fish to find their way back to their own birthplace is a total mystery. The very first salmon that I ever caught here in, where are we, Esperanza Inlet. We're heading for Tarsus. It's a wonderful feeling. It's a, a primitive hunter feeling. Whoa. The Pacific is home to a large variety of fish that decorate many a dinner plate and are a delicacy that is enjoyed by many, perhaps too many. How much longer will their numbers last? We called a red snapper. Well, he doesn't seem to be snapping very much. The flying fish's most striking feature is their streamlined torpedo shape and their pectoral fins, which are unusually large. This remarkable shape enables the fish to escape from predators by making self-propelled leaps out of the water. The large wing-like fins get them airborne, often flying just over the water's surface for considerable distances. Their flights are typically around 50 meters at a rate of 60 kilometers per hour, but they can glide for up to 200 meters. These leaps often land them on the decks of passing boats. There are 40 species of flying fish, they can grow up to one and a half feet in length, two pounds in weight, and their wings are virtually transparent. A school of flying fish in flight shimmer and twinkles like a sea of stars. Marine scientists have replaced the starfish's common name with sea star, because the starfish is not a fish, but still lives strictly a marine life. There are some 2,000 species of sea star living in all the world's oceans, from tropical habitats to the cold sea floor, and are closely related to sea urchins and sand dollars. The five-arm varieties are the most common, hence their name, but species with 10, 20 or even 40 arms exist. Sea stars are famous for their ability to regenerate limbs and, in some cases, entire bodies. The lifespans of starfish vary considerably, generally being longer in larger species. Starfish and other echinoderms, vulnerable to all forms of water pollution, pump water directly into their bodies via the water vascular system, with little ability to filter out the toxins and contaminants it contains. The Greek word for jellyfish was planktos, meaning a wanderer or drifter, and they are found in every ocean from the surface to the deep sea. With over 1,500 species, jellyfish are often large and colorful and are common to coastal zones worldwide. Not capable of swimming, the majority rely on the currents to propel them and assist in traveling to their destination. Their gelatinous umbrella-shaped bell pulsates for attempted locomotion while trailing stinging tentacles innocently drift to stun and paralyze their prey. Jellyfish hunt passively and are carnivorous, feeding on plankton, crustaceans, fish eggs, small fish and other jellyfish, ingesting and voiding through the same hole in the middle of the bell. Major predators of jellyfish are mostly large fish species, so populations of jellies may be expanding globally as a result of overfishing. When marine ecosystems become disturbed, jellyfish can flourish, creating a bloom of them. And this further offsets the ecosystem balance. Jellyfish reproduce rapidly, have fast growth rates, and predate many species, having been in existence for up to 700 million years. They feed via touch rather than visually so they can feed effectively at night and in turbid waters. One kind of jellyfish, the Pacific sea nettle, is a common, free-floating, cup-shaped organism that lives in the East Pacific Ocean from Canada to Mexico, named as the one with the golden armament. Sea nettles have a distinctive 
golden brown bell with a reddish tint. The bell can grow to be larger than one meter in diameter in the wild, though most are less than 50 centimeters across. The long spiraling white oral arms and the 24 undulating maroon tentacles may trail behind as far as five meters, creating a remarkable display. For humans, its sting is often irritating, but rarely dangerous. Lifespans typically range from a few hours to several months, with most large coastal jellyfish living two to six months, during which they grow from a millimeter or two to many centimeters in diameter. Jellyfish stings range from a twinge to tingling to agony. Most jellyfish stings are not deadly, but stings of the box jellyfish can kill a grown man in a matter of seconds or minutes. Despite their potent sting, they also have predators. Marine birds, large fish, and curiously, other jellyfish. Jellyfish aren't actually fish, but plankton, made up of 98% water, and will virtually disappear if washed ashore due to the process of evaporation. The Chinese have fished jellyfish for 1,700 years. They are considered a delicacy and are used in Chinese medicine. Few marine creatures are as mysterious and intimidating as jellyfish. They, at times, pick up hitchhikers, including small fish and crabs that hide inside the sea nettle's bell. If they're long enough, their host may turn on them and feed on them, so it's not good to outstay one's welcome. With only rudimentary sensory nerves at the base of their tentacles, no brains, no heart, and no blood, it is amazing that jellyfish have survived for those 700 million years, since long before dinosaurs roamed the earth. Risso's dolphins were named after Antoine Risso in 1812, and are sometimes called grey dolphins. They have a very robust body with a narrow tailstock and have been found in superpods of several thousand, but typically averaging between 10 and 30 animals. They are capable of diving to at least 1,000 feet below the surface and holding their breaths for 30 minutes. They usually make shorter dives of one to two minutes. They feed mainly at night when their prey is closer to the surface, on fish, krill, squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. Rousseau's dolphins, also known as grampuses, are one of the larger members of the dolphin family. Length is typically three meters, with males slightly larger than females. Average weight is 300 and can go up to 500 kilograms. They have distinctive tall dorsal fins and a mouth line that slopes upward, giving the impression of a permanent smile. Color patterns change dramatically with age. Infants are grey to brown, then they darken to nearly black and lighten with maturity. Distributed worldwide, they favour the deeper waters of the continental slopes, yet are occasionally seen on near shore. Instead of making major migrations, they make seasonal shifts from deeper waters to more shallow and then back again. Summer carving occurs in the western Pacific and winter carving in the eastern. But the Risso's dolphin's low reproductive rate of one offspring every two or three years means that population growth is slow for this species. Risso's slow, gentle glide through the water can, at any given moment, change to leap, spy hopping, fluke and flipper flapping. Risso's dolphins occasionally surf the bow waves of passing boats and are long-lived animals with an estimated 20 to 40 years. Their most common threat is man, because they are actively hunted for food by the Japanese. The Pacific Ocean is a world of its own. On the surface, one can experience the optical phenomenon known as the green flash that occurs shortly after sunset for no more than a second or two above the disappearing sun and beneath the vast blue sea are animals and other organisms that contribute to the hoped-for balance in the ecosystem. Uppermost in the food chain is the whale, the largest mammal on Earth, and at the other end of the spectrum is the microscopic plankton. There are also multitudes of sharks and numerous varieties of other fish, 
and a whole variety of exotic plant and animal life. There are also the grand coral reefs, some healthier than others, home to a whole host of tiny creatures, all essential to a good balance of the complex ecosystem. The coral reefs are rich in life, providing a home for 25% of all marine species and are often referred to as the rainforests of the sea. The Great Barrier Reef off the coast of northeastern Australia is the largest coral reef in the world at over 2,000 kilometers long. Deep on the Pacific floor is a reddish-brown material derived from the remains of marine plants and animals that once inhabited the waters above. Plankton is the basis of the ocean food chain, made up mostly of algae and zooplankton that are like the early evolutionary stages of familiar seashore animals, such as mussels, crabs, snails. Phytoplankton require light and therefore live near the ocean surface, while zooplankton is found from sea surface to the ocean depths. Without this supply of plankton, there would be little life in the ocean. Marine algae, or seaweeds, anchor to surfaces with a sucker-like attachment photosynthesize the sun's energy and provide a source of food for grazing animals. This ocean is a realm of fishes, numbering in the tens of thousands of extraordinarily different types, from the bony fish to the spiny rayed fish. The massive manta ray and the 1,000 or so species of sharks, including the world's largest fish, the whale shark, so-called because it is massive like the whale and also is a filter feeder like the whale. There are more than 300 species of birds for which the ocean is the normal habitat and food source. Marine mammals include the dugongs and manatees, whales, dolphins and porpoises, seals, sea lions and walruses, otters and polar bears. And let us not forget the marine reptiles that include a number of marine turtle species, many sea snakes, the only lizard, the marine iguana, and saltwater crocodiles. All life requires energy to live and reproduce. And though most energy is derived from the sun, the ocean also gains a significant amount of energy from the deep ocean volcanic vents. The deep ocean is rich in species that have evolved to live under high water pressure with no light in deep, cold ocean water. From the ocean surface down to 11,000 meters at the deepest seabed in the Pacific Ocean, there is a seething mass of living organisms that are essential to the health of this vast body of water. It is mankind's responsibility to preserve this vital component of the world's complex ecosystem. Otherwise, the planet as we know it will not survive. In our modern industrialized world, human-induced climate change threatens coastal and marine ecosystems. Oceans and climate are intimately linked and oceans play a fundamental role in alleviating climate change by serving as a major heat and carbon sink Oceans also bear the brunt of climate change, as evidenced by growing acidification, a rise in sea level, coral bleaching, and changes in air and water temperature and currents, weather patterns, seasonal shifts, coastal inundation, coastal erosion, dead zones, loss of marine mammals, changes in levels of precipitation, fishery decline, all of which in turn affect the health of marine species ecosystems and our coastal communities. The interrelationship between oceans and climate change must be recognized, understood and considered. Oceans are especially vulnerable to the adverse impacts from human emissions or greenhouse gases. Governments must be made aware that immediate action is necessary to prevent an almighty calamity in the relatively near future. Climate change occurs when long-term weather patterns are altered. And although this is a natural cyclical occurrence, human activity has hastened this process to our ultimate doom. Changes under the surface of the deep blue sea are not easy to observe, but the effects of industrial fishing 
pollution and climate change are having a major effect on our oceans. The decline in Arctic sea ice, both in extent and thickness, over the last several decades is further evidence for rapid climate change. The frozen sea ice floats on the ocean surface and covers millions of square miles in the polar regions, varying with the seasons. In the Arctic, some sea ice remains year after year, yet satellite observations show that Arctic sea ice was reduced by half between 1979 and the year 2000 and is presently declining at a rate of 4% annually. Recent climate models suggest that ice-free conditions in the summer may occur within the next very few years. The reality is that the currently observed rate of decline remains faster than many of the older computer models were able to report. The ocean absorbs, stores and then slowly releases large quantities of heat, buffering the climate of the nearby land and, over time, the entire planet. Since the Industrial Revolution, mankind has increased the acidity of our oceans by 30% and has increased the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere by over 30%, primarily from the burning of fossil fuels. A combination of other activities has resulted in increased levels of greenhouse gases such as methane and nitrous oxide. Added together, our polluted oceans have the world facing unequivocal warming of our climate and an ocean with altered acidity levels. As a result, many oceanic species are forced to migrate so they can maintain the temperature conditions they need for feeding and reproduction. Alteration of water temperature directly affects development, age of sexual maturity, timing of spawning, growth and survival of most marine life. The loss of ice sheets in the Arctic is having, and will increasingly have, adverse consequences for many species of marine mammals like polar bears, walruses and ice seals. Warmer oceanic and riparian waters are resulting in increased marine diseases and invasive species. Larger and more frequent storms are accelerating shoreline erosion, loss of community infrastructure, increased fishing risks and adverse health consequences. Ocean acidification will harm calcium carbonate plankton, adversely affect shellfish larvae, hinder the ability of corals to build new reefs and cause serious food chain disruptions. Sea level rise will cause human habitat loss and climate refugees that will need to be relocated as their island and coastal homelands are eliminated. Globally, Arctic sea ice helps regulate climate by reflecting sunlight back into space. As sea ice is lost, more sunlight is absorbed into the newly open ocean. The water warms, causing more ice to melt. A surprising amount of carbon is locked into Arctic tundra, in wetlands and in pockets of gas frozen under the ocean floors. Melting ice may already be responsible for increased emissions of methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Massive amounts of methane gas are currently locked in and beneath permafrost from prehistoric times when mammoths walked to the Earth in the Arctic and on continental shelves. If climate change allows these gases to reach the atmosphere, they will cause even greater warming. Without sea ice, the interactions between atmosphere, water and animals will all change. The system is too complex and our knowledge too limited to predict what will happen in any detail. But the broad outlines are clear. Since water circulates over the globe in a predictable pattern, changes in the great ocean conveyor belt further affect worldwide climate and its inhabitants. Extreme weather conditions like hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, high precipitation rainfalls increase in intensity with only a very slight increase in sea temperature. A warming of the tropical sea surface by 0.5% Celsius has increased hurricane energy by 70% globally. Intense storms 
cause severe damage to shoreline and shallow water marine communities, including beaches, mangrove forests, seagrass communities, coral reefs and shallow bottom dwelling communities. Global warming is predicted to increase the frequency of severe storms at the same time that sea level rise magnifies their effect on low-lying coastlines and islands. Coral bleaching occurs when all the microorganisms that live in the coral decrease in response to high temperatures. Sustained bleaching can lead to coral death. The hardier cold water corals will be severely stressed by the year 2040 and two-thirds of all coral reefs could be in a corrosive environment by the end of the century, maybe much earlier. All female turtles come ashore at nesting beaches, dig nests in the sands, lay their eggs and then return to the sea. Erosion of nesting beaches caused by rising sea levels and rising temperatures increase the chance that sand temperatures will exceed the upper limit for egg incubation, which is 34 degrees Celsius, and rising temperatures bias the sex ratio towards females. Whereas, if warming raises temperatures by an additional one degree Celsius or more, no males will be produced there at all. Shipping, boat traffic, seismic exploration, naval activity, oil and gas development, wind farms and other activities make the ocean not just a busy place, but also a noisy place. And this affects animal communications and existence. Grunts, coughs, clicks and types of fast repetitive ticks are among dozens of sounds that fishes make. These sounds, though less eloquent in name and sound than the enchanting songs of the humpback and the serene calls of the orcas, nonetheless serve an important purpose. The use of sound is critical for the survival of many marine species. Just as light and sight for humans are essential to make sense of our environment, sound and hearing serve the same function in an ocean largely deprived of light. Marine animals use sound, both actively and passively, to socialize, find food, avoid predators and echolocate. Just as smog can cloud out air and light, causing reduced visibility, the babel of human noise in the ocean is clouding out the sound space that animals like whales and dolphins need to effectively make use of sound for their survival. As the Arctic ice pack diminishes, more species of seals are hauling out onto the shores. Walrus and spotted seals on the coasts of the United States, Canada and Russia show increasing signs of an often fatal mystery disease of unknown etiology. The harp seals in Greenland are similarly affected. Habitat loss, pollution, invasive species, climate change and unsustainable harvesting have pushed over 500 marine species dangerously close to extinction in the oceans. Land species of every description, from lichens to leatherback turtles, from whooping cranes to wood bison, are at risk. Mankind holds the future health of all the seas, including the great Pacific Ocean, in its hands, together with the physical welfare of the great land masses. When are the people, and particularly the governments of the world, going to wake up to the truth and do some very unpopular things to reverse the current trends? If they do not do so soon, it may be too late to avoid an environmental Armageddon within a very, very short time.